Alright mates, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering the Council of Three Hammers and Throne of the Elements from Chronicle Volume 3. So let's go! Firstly, in a fair fight, Garrosh may have still beaten Cairn in their Megora, but unbeknownst to both of them, it wasn't a fair fight at all. Cairn had a fierce rival called Magatha Grim Totem, and she'd realised that the High Chieftain's duel with Garrosh was a bloody brilliant opportunity for her to seize Thunder Bluff. She'd have control over all Tauren if Cairn lost, so she went ahead and secretly coated Garrosh's axe, Gore Howl, with poison, and it was this advantage that really ensured his victory. After the duel, Magatha went ahead and took the Tauren capital, but she didn't have it for very long, because Cairn has a son, Bane Bloodhoof, and he quickly launched a counterattack. She begged Garrosh to help her defend against Bane, but the acting war chief told her to piss off. He wasn't too pleased to find out that she'd poisoned his blade. It tarnished his victory and called into question whether he truly was the better fighter. So Bane won pretty easily. When faced with Magatha, he really wanted to execute the cow. But in honour of his father, he showed compassion and just exiled her instead. Meanwhile, just as the Horde was struggling with some internal issues, the Alliance weren't having a whale of a time either. All of the recent natural disasters had hit the dwarven city of Ironforge especially hard. Earthquakes had hit the mountains outside the stronghold, causing things to fall on people, which caused those people to get crushed and stuff. King Magni Bronzebeard wasn't going to just sit around whilst his people were in danger. He'd do anything to protect them, even at the risk of his own well-being. Luckily, he and his advisors had recently learned of an ancient ritual to commune with the Earth, which originated from the dwarves' ancestors, the Earthen. Magni went ahead and volunteered to undergo the ritual himself, so he could find out what the balls was causing all this elemental upheaval. Unfortunately, the ritual didn't exactly go as planned. It didn't just connect Magni with the Earth, it made him one with it. He transformed into a seemingly lifeless diamond statue, and most of the dwarves just kind of assumed he was dead now. News of the king's fate reached his estranged daughter, Moira Thorasan. She'd been hanging about in Shadowforge City ever since she'd helped free the Dark Iron Dwarves from the Fire Elementals and protect them from the Black Dragonflight. But these recent events threatened to undo all of that progress. As the elemental spirits grew more chaotic, some of the Dark Irons just went back to bending the knee to Ragnaros again, like bloody idiots. They even tried to lead a revolt against Moira, so she decided the best option was probably for her and the remaining loyal Dark Irons to cheese it somewhere safe. And what better place than Ironforge? The now vacant throne was technically hers by right, so even though she knew Ironforge would not be very welcoming to the Dark Irons, she didn't give a shit mate. Royal succession and stuff. Her word was now law, whether they liked it or not. She marched right into Ironforge with her followers and declared herself queen under the mountain. Some dwarves were pretty angry, but others were okay with it. This caused tensions to grow in the city, and a civil war seemed very likely. And to prevent an outbreak of violence, Moira got a little bit martial law-ish. She barred anyone from entering or leaving Ironforge until she could complete her transfer of power. And this wasn't the best idea she'd ever had, because Stormwind's prince, Anduin Rin, was in Ironforge at that particular moment so the dwarves were now technically holding him hostage. King Varian Rin lost his shit, like he always does. This was an act of war. Anduin was the only family the king had left, and he'd do anything to protect him, even if it meant spilling the blood of his allies. So he gathered a strike force of assassins and infiltrated the dwarven kingdom. They were stealthy in shiz and managed to corner Moira without alerting anyone. Varian was just about ready to cut her throat until a little baby weedy boy's voice piped up and said, Please, father, show mercy or something. He took everything Varian had to restrain himself, but he saw the wisdom in his son's words. He spared Moira's life, but he would not grant her sole dominion over Ironforge, which is a bit presumptuous and arrogant, but still. He recommended they set up some kind of council or something, so the dwarves did, and they named it the Council of Three Hammers. This governing body included a representative from each of the rival clans, Moira Thorasan, Faustad Wildhammer, and Muradin Bronzebeard. The forming of the council was met with mixed opinions, and it took a little while for the council to find its footing. These three clans had not lived together for hundreds of years, so finding common ground was quite difficult. A lot of times, they'd all just end up punching each other's faces. Another meanwhile, Thrall arrived on Outland and met up with his grandma, Great Mother Gaia. He asked for her advice on the elemental upheaval on Azeroth, and she responded by kind of chastising him a little bit. You're a gifted shaman, Thrall, but you're also a bloody idiot. She advised him that if he wanted to make any real difference on Azeroth, he needed to hone his connection to the elements. So she found him a mentor, her brightest student, Agra. And at first, Agra couldn't stand this green-skinned upstart. She wasn't impressed at all that he led the Horde. She actually kind of considered that to be part of the reason why he was so crap. 
She argued that he divided his attentions between shamanism and his duties as war chief, and ultimately that would lead to him sucking at both. So he needed to choose, shaman or war chief. You can't have both. Thrall refused to abandon the horde, but he did devote himself to Agra's teachings. Every day he watched, he listened, got himself a few gold stars, and day by day his connection to the elements strengthened, and his relationship with Agra kind of blossomed a bit too. Once Thrall was confident in his new abilities, he visited the Throne of the Elements and went ahead and spoke to the four elemental furies, Gordog, Incinerators, Calandrios, and Aborioth. They went ahead and told Thrall their life story. Although things had been tough for them during the days of the Old Horde and fell magic and the planet exploding and stuff, they were on the mend now. Peace had finally settled on Outland. Thrall then asked them for a solution to ease Azeroth's own elementals, but all they gave him was a warning. The elemental unrest on your world echoes the conditions on Draenor, just before it ripped apart, so you might want to keep an eye on that. He quickly returned to Azeroth to warn his people, and Agra joined him. It was difficult for her to leave her home in the Grand, but to be honest, she was starting to think Thrall was a bit sexy. And also, being a shaman, it was kind of her duty to help with elemental problems. Thrall was actually a little bit shocked to see just how much things had changed since he'd left. The renewed conflict between the Horde and Alliance, Cairn Bloodhoof was now dead, He'd only been gone five minutes. He very quickly realised that putting Garrosh in charge had been a huge mistake, and that was probably going to end up being on his conscience for quite a while. Especially since he didn't really have a chance to do anything about it, because the entire world buckled. The ground cracked beneath his feet. It's bloody cataclysm time! And we're leaving it there! In the next Volume 3 video, the shattering causes the entire world to look different, and this presents the Horde with an opportunity to try and gain a new foothold in the Eastern Kingdoms. Gilneas! If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!